song placement, uh, you know, increasingly, uh, since, you know, we're not making a whole lot of money on, on streaming and whatnot, it becomes very important song placement in, in, in TV uh, commercials and, and film uh, is increasingly uh, important. Um, I remember when, when Fantagram played LA for the first time, I was talking to the record label, and I said, and there was a showcase at the Whiskey or someplace, and I said, well, how was it? And they said there were at least 25 music supervisors there with clipboards. Music supervisors are the people who play songs in, in, uh, in TV and film and whatnot. And, and he was ecstatic, ecstatic that, you know, they, they, that this opportunity came. Because, you know, for commercial, for TV, it's, they pay you cash right up front, you know, generally. Uh, and it's a, it's oftentimes a good a good chunk of change, um, and you know it it helps sell your records. It helps you you, you know get familiar. But uh, most importantly, um, you know you, you you get real money, um, and and it's great. Um, there are online uh, you know Rumblefish is one Flick Tracks, which is a, a company that I work with. Uh, they have online databases where you can go in and put in keywords and, you know, I want music that sounds like this or it has this mood that, that and, uh, you know, and, and the music supervisor can just click on a song and say, okay, we want to use this on a, um, you know, internet TV show. Uh, we estimate this many people are going to be watching and they give you a price um, and you pay. The problem with Rumblefish and, and Flick Tracks um, is that you don't really have control. They, they, don't, they won't contact you and say, we've got an offer, will you take it? They just do the deal. Uh, I represented uh, some nuns uh, down in Round Top, New York, who make these fabulous records. Um, you know, kind of like, you remember the chant records from the early 90s? Uh, this is like the female version. These are cloistered nuns. Uh, they, they live in this monastery and they, they can't talk other than one hour a day, but they spend four or five hours a day singing. Uh, together and they've made and they called me up and they're like, oh, Mr. Dapp, you know, we have these records and you know, we, how, how can we make some money? And and I'm going, well, you know, film and TV would be really good. Oh yes, and I said, well, there's these, you know, databases where you can just put your put your stuff on and and you know, and people will license it. Oh yes, where, how, how can we do this? And I said, oh, wait a minute though. I mean, you've got nuns singing like angels, and you know, my understanding of pop culture is. When you hear music like that in a movie, it's usually when you know the drunken priest is about to put the silver stake through the demon seed's heart, right? And I'm like, I don't know if you want to have you know your music in those. Oh no, Mr. Depp, they're giggling, you know. They're going, oh no, 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 we don't we want to do that. Um, so just be, you know, be aware. I mean, I, I've got clients that they'll be watching cable TV and they'll you know they'll be watching some show on like Animal Planet. And they'll go, boy, that song sounds that song sounds familiar. And they go, that, that that's my song. You know, I mean, it, it got licensed. And they didn't know it. You don't. You're not going to know where it got licensed till the till the check comes in. Um, and so, you know, if if you don't want to, you know, if you want to keep control of your music, don't use these services. Um, you know, try you know, contacting music supervisors. It's very very difficult to get through. Um, but you know, once you've got the ear of a music supervisor. Um, and they've had luck with your work, they will come back over and over again.